morning, everyone. Welcome to uh, Mass. Hope everyone has grabbed a bulletin. We have plenty for everyone to have. Beginning on page six of the bulletin are all the songs and the readings for Mass. So please look at those and refer to those. I do have to tell you uh, one uh, typo in the opening hymn. In the second uh, verse, we didn't pick up. Here lies the moron. It's supposed to be, it's supposed to be more. Okay, so don't say moron. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I also welcome to all those who are joining us for the live stream. Uh, there is a link to the same bulletin to follow along. Um, again, at the entrances to the church, there are offering boxes. I'd like to put your envelope there, they'll be picked up right away after Mass. When it comes to Holy Communion, actually Ellen and I will be doing Holy Communion today. I'll be up in the front, she'll be in the middle at the cross, and then Doug and I think it's Hayden are going to be at the specific views for Holy Communion. Um, I think that's all she wrote. Today uh, we're hearing a very familiar parable, the parable of the, of, of the sower. And we're we'll looking at the idea of oh, what is your image of God? What is your image of God? Is it truly the image that is revealed by the Bible? So, a really important question for us as we mature as Christians to have the, the true image of God in our minds and in our hearts. So, when you hear the bell, we'll start the first hymn, which is on page six. All pictures of our God and King, just don't say more. And welcome, and glad to see everyone here.
and make our souls a good soil to receive His goodness and His grace. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fall, through my fall, through my most grievous fall. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us sing together the Gloria as we glorify our God. from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down, and do not return there, for they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows, and bread to the one who feeds. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word 
shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end to which I send it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
gospel according to St. Matthew. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, where it had little soil. It sprang up at once, because the soil was not deep, and when the sun rose, it was scorched, and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit a hundred or sixty or thirty fold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The Gospel of the Lord. In my work as a spiritual director, helping people to mature in the, the Christian and spiritual life, one of the most important moments for an adult maturing in the Christian life is when they truly grapple with their image of God. What is the image of God that they have? Does it actually correspond to what is revealed in the scriptures? Some of the things that hold people back the most or people having, unknowingly, a distorted version of God in their mind. Let me give you an example. Let's say you grow up in a household where the father has difficulties in showing love. Maybe he has an addiction to alcohol. Maybe he has been abusive to his wife and to his children. And a child grows up in that environment experiences that conditional love, that lack of love, and then that same person comes into church and we get up and we preach that God is a loving Father. God's a loving Father. How does that image work for a person who has a bad relationship with their Father? It puts a block up in understanding who God is and the way that God relates. Sometimes people think that God relates to them like their fallen father relates to them when they hear the word father. Today, though, Jesus wants to set aside briefly for today the image of family when it comes to describing him. Just to set it aside. And he wants to use a, a farming example wants to use a farming example to try to get at who God really is. And the question that we have to ask ourselves is, do you believe in the true image of God? So here's, here's one way of applying this parable. Imagine you're a farmer, and you go out to the seed store and you buy all these bags of pioneer corn, corn seed. I heard they're really expensive bags of corn seed. And you go out there, and you take the seed and you don't prepare your acreage, you don't prepare by cultivating or chiseling or whatever the word that you use, I'm not a farmer, I'm from your seed. Whatever you do, and you know what you do? You just start spreading the seed wherever they want. You spread it in your yard, spread it on your driveway, spread it on Highway 52 when you're driving to church, this starts spreading all that seed all over the place. Would you call that guy a smart farmer? You'd call him an idiot. An idiot. Wasting all that seed. What idiot does that? He's crazy. That's what God is trying to help us see, Jesus. What's the image of God? shown in that parable of the sower. Well, it shows three aspects of the real God. Number one, he, he is life always. 
God always gives life. When does he ever not give life? You point a page in the Bible where he doesn't give life. He always gives life to the Word. And God the Father sends his Word into the world, Jesus. And every time Jesus encounters somebody, they experience life. Number two, God is generous. He doesn't calculate his life. He just gives it continually, over and over and over and over again. God just keeps on generously giving it. He's not a miser. He's not a sheep. He's not a sheepscape. He keeps on giving and giving his life. Like the crazy farmer spreading seed everywhere all over the place. God's a little crazy. And then lastly, God doesn't make distinctions. He loves every single person, whether they receive him, whether they reject him, whether they hate him, whether they love him, whether they sin, whether they're holy, God loves without any strings attached. Is that what you believe about God? If that's really the true image of God, I really want to get to know him. I don't know about you. Hey, you always give life? Hey, you're always generous? Hey, you love everyone no matter what? That's the soul. The soils that the sower sows the seed on is us. And our distorted understanding of God are the different aspects of what we believe God to be, even though He's not. That's why we're cultivating that good soil in us to receive, to receive the true image of God, the good news, the joy of being loved by so great a God. That's the work of the Christian life. Help me, Lord, to believe. Believe who you really are, not what other people say that you are. Right? Isn't that what the devil does to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden? You can't trust that God. He wants to take things away from you, so you can't eat fruit from that tree. That's a false notion of God. And that's the temptation that Adam and Eve fell to. That's the temptation you and I fall to. I want to give you a practical example of that. I had the privilege of directing a Catholic Charities Council. And she's been telling me that just in the last couple of weeks, just now, she's had to deal with three mental illness emergencies. Just in the last two weeks. Just in the last week since I got back from vacation, I've had a couple of calls from people who are just struggling with this pandemic. They're at a breaking point. And these are the thoughts going through their minds. Why is God doing this to us? When is it going to end? What's the point of going on? Why am I depressed? Why am I sad? Why can't I get myself out of bed? You know? There's the phenomenon of people who compare themselves to others to the point that they start cutting themselves. It's a struggle for a lot of women right now because of this false notion of beauty that you gotta look like Gwen Paltrow in order to be pretty. And if you don't, and you compare yourself, better start cutting yourself to make sure you're alive. See, that's the, the false notion of looking at yourself, which means how do you look at God? I struggle with that sometimes. When you make a series of mistakes and you wake up in the morning and you're like, man, I don't have it back together. I'm, I'm an idiot. I bet you've said that before to yourself. 
you really believe it, if you really believe it, and you believe it for a long period of time, you might start thinking that God thinks you're an idiot. Not true. That's the thorny, that's the hardened road, that's the driveway that doesn't allow the seed to take root and grow in us. That's why we have to hear over and over and over again that God gives life, that the gospel that he offers is the way to joy in life, that the commandments are not burdensome, they keep us in right relationship with God, that he's generous, and that he doesn't make any distinctions, he loves everyone freely. When that happens, when we believe that, and have ears to hear that, that's when the seed can grow. That's when you're less concerned about yourself. That's when you take the risk of sacrificially loving another person because you know that you are cherished and loved by God. There are so many people who do not think that they are cherished, who do not see a purpose in life, who do not see that there's a loving God that wants to will them into existence and redeem them. That's why the suicide rate is the People have lost the sense of the good news of how good God is. So as you come to the altar today, I hope that God knocks your socks off with his goodness. Just knocks it completely off. That you walk up here barefoot because he knocks your shoes off and your socks off. He messes up your hair and he takes you by the shoulder and he shakes you. And he says, I love you that much. Will you believe it? And let that be your joy and your peace. It's really scary preaching to people with masks. I don't know what you're thinking right now, so I'm going to sit down. You know what you say at the end of the gospel? The gospel of the Lord. The gospel of the Lord. That's the Greek for the good news of salvation. The good news. Isn't this good news, everybody? Unbelievably good news. And that's what we're doing us in order to go back to life tomorrow for Monday. Because knowing this, to our bones, that's why we got to hear it all the time. All right, thank you, Lord, for being so good. You are so good. Help us to receive your goodness. Amen. Let's stand now and profess our faith together. It's in the bulletin if you forgot to. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, unsubstantial with the Father. For him all things remain, for us men and for our salvation, we pay God from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified in the mother's fire. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life. Who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the power of the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, gathered as one to celebrate the good things we have received from our God. Let us ask him to prompt in us prayers that are worthy of his hearing. The response to each petition will be, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the gift of love in the heart of Christ. Give us a new heart, O Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Where our love has torn thin, give us a new heart, O Lord. Where our love has grown lukewarm, give us a new heart, O Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Where our love has been overgrown by anger, resentment, or disdain, give us a new heart, O Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Where our name 
salvation and new heart, O Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Where our bodies and souls need healing from sadness and illness, give us your healing, O Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Where our lives find its completion in you, have mercy on the faithfully departed, Lord, especially Elsie Tim and Joy Schindelbach. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In the petitions of your church, be pleased to in your sight, O Lord, so that we may receive from your mercy what we cannot ask out of confidence in our own merits. Through Christ our Lord. Please be seated as we prepare the altar. The next hymn is For the Fruits of This Creation. It's in page something in your bowl. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Look upon the offerings of the Church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy. Your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word, for whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice, we acclaim. <laughs>
pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew falls so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word in my soul. us on the live stream, please join with me in the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Well, please be seated. We'll go over Holy Communion. So the sides here will go first. And then Ellen will be at the cross. Doug and Hayden will release you alternating pews. Um, if there's too many people in the aisle, just stay in your pew. And our community gave us seats. Gathered in stone, I think it's on the last page of the
Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hope all we have very nice uh, Sunday, and please see the bulletin for all the Mass times and the Mass schedule. And uh, yeah, let's pray for the end of the coronavirus, especially those that have been affected and starting to hit our area a little bit more. And uh, yeah, let's be vigilant with our practices. And uh, thank you for cooperating and helping us with that. We'll have Mass, all four of our Masses, each weekend. I think it's good to have more now, so we can spread this all out a little bit more. That's all she wrote. Make sure you take your bulletin with you. That's your souvenir. Don't leave it with me. Take it with you. Even if there are a couple of you out home, sleep with your bulletin when you leave out the church. Okay? Have a great day. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. To the prayer of St. Michael before our last song. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And to thy own prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking for the souls. The last song is the Golden Only, one verse of Six of the Mountains, on page seven in your book. Sing to the mountain, sing to the sea, raise your voices in the mountains. Sunday, everyone. Which communion was that week? Four? Three is only the third. I thought it was the fourth. Keep on counting, okay? Thanks for joining, everybody.